a blessed day to you, dear friends. As we celebrate today the Feast of Transfiguration, may God's peace and joy be with you and your family. This is Sister Joy of the Daughters of St. Paul for today's Gospel Power. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my Son, the Beloved. Listen to Him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, He ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what this rising from the dead could mean. In the person of Jesus, heaven has come down on earth to establish God's reign among earthly creatures and to make human beings God's children who participate in the divine life. When Jesus embraced our earthiness, His solidarity with us was complete, His divine splendor veiled in our mortal flesh. The transfiguration is a momentary lifting up of the veil to give us a brief glimpse of that splendor which the beloved Son possesses in His union with His Father, and which, at the same time, a preview of the future life to which Jesus will give us access. Sisters and brothers, the Transfiguration is a necessary prelude to the drama on Calvary, for glory is inseparable from the cross. Jesus will share with us His divine Sonship by subjecting Himself to the human experience of suffering and death, which will permanently remove the veil that conceals His divine splendor. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, may we never fail for the illusion of seeking glory apart from the cross. Amen. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 virus that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed, made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted, 
may they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin, Amen. Our Lady, health of the sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. Saint Rock, pray for us. Saint Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. Saint Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. Celebrating the Pauline Family Year of the Word of God from November 26, 2020 to November 26, 2021 with a theme that the Lord's message may spread quickly. Yeah.